Do we stage every bedroom? How many pillows do we use? How do we choose which style to go for? In this video, we're attempting to answer all the questions when it comes to beds in home staging. Welcome back to Foxy TV episode 177. Over the previous few months, I've been keeping a list or a document of all the questions we've received that fall into the category of beds and bedding. I've added a few other questions to try and cover off pretty much the whole topic and anything you would like to to know on the subject and we put these uh, questions to our chief stylist Phoebe. I've also put some images and footage in to provide some context and to, and to keep things interesting. Now if you don't get your question answered in this video or if you have a question on anything specific when it comes to beds, linen, bedding, please feel free to add your question in the comment section below and I will endeavour to get back to you in a future video. Alright, let's go to Phoebe. So whether or not we style every single bedroom, it depends on a couple of factors. Budget, as well as are those rooms small? Are they elongated in a funny shape? So if a room is smaller than I'd say 2.5 wide, I would generally recommend to try and style those spaces. Um, reason being, up to 2.7 we can get a double bed in there. 2.5 would definitely do a single bed with a desk. If we don't get a bed in there, Generally, it's, it's written off as a study space or as a kid's space. You can't justify it being an actual guest size bedroom. So those smaller rooms, um, definitely we try and get a bedroom in. Uh, then the long rooms, they are also very similar. So the elongated spaces, they tend to be 2.7 wide, unless it's like a sunroom in a Queenslander that's been converted. Um, they're a bit, bit skinnier. But if we can get a bed in there and then show there's a study nook space, it just increases the functionality of that room and gives more options. So requires less imagination from your buyers. So those are the factors that will play into whether or not we style a whole room, a whole, um, a whole house with all of the bedrooms. As a standard, we present options to all of our vendors for a full style, as well as a styling of generally a master bedroom or a master bedroom with those funny sized rooms. So we, we'll send it through as an option. We get asked all the time, I actually never ever used to use bed heads when we started out. They were a cost that I didn't feel was justified for our vendors. So when we were hiring a bed, a bed head, we were having to pay uh, 30-ish dollars per week to hire those bed heads and then have to obviously pass on that cost. Um, and for the impact when we could have nice big European pillows and gorgeous big fluffy feather filled cushions, the impact of the bed head was minimal. Um, as we increased the inventory that we owned um, and I great, built great relationships with suppliers and local upholsterers, uh, we started to increase our inventory that we hold of bed heads and it's now something we send out in the same pricing of the bed, uh, bedroom as per normal. We still only send it out in a queen bedroom. We uh, reserve, actually a master bedroom I should say, we reserve uh, the use of bed heads in the other bedrooms for more of our higher end properties. Again, it's down to return on investment. When we're concentrating on properties sub $2 million in Brisbane, particularly if it's an investment property, clients aren't interested in spending that money on a bed head. Both of those questions, pillows and throws and coverlets, are uh, dependent on which bed we are making and whether or not it's high end, all those things factor in. As an average, um, a queen bed will have a coverlet, which is the big, thick, quilted, uh, chunky doona that we put over the top of our standard doona. And then we put a knitted throw blanket over the top of that. That just adds some interest. A lot of people actually don't like that throw blanket because we go to all the effort to make the bed look pristine and beautiful and then we literally toss a blanket on top. Uh, that's a big question mark for a lot of people who are not in the design world. Um, pillows then depend on the size of the bed. So a queen bed will standardly have five, uh, a, a double bed standardly will have three, a single bed will have two plus some sort of uh, toy. Um, and then you've also got your standard pillows and your Euro pillows in there always. Okay, so other furniture items in a space, all down, that all depends on the size of the room. So I know Cody's done um, Foxy TV episodes on master bedroom retreats. So that's when the bedroom has an extra sized uh, space off to one portion or even a separate room attached to it. So we could, if those spaces are left empty, again, you're putting it down to the buyers to imagine what those spaces are used for. Um, and having an oversized master with just a bed in it is really uninspiring and does not emoke, uh, evoke that emotional connect, uh, connection to the property. So we create a space in that room. So generally if it's oversized master and we've got a room that's sort of seven, six meters by five meters or you've got a nook off to the side and it's got size space enough there to pop in a sofa, we will. Um, and that way you've got mum and dad's area 
in my house it's used to put my clothes, but the idea is that it's space that mum and dad can sit and have a cup of coffee away from everybody else. Um, in a single bedroom, we tend to always put something else other than just a bed. If it's a space, a family orientated home, the single bedroom can have a teepee. Um, we like to have a floor rug in there. Um, definitely have the bedside table and a big lamp. If it's less of a kid's space and more of a guest room where we're trying to make that fifth bedroom downstairs that's slash a study uh, feel like it actually is a bedroom, then we'll get a, a desk in there. If it's really important that we can show a home office space integrated into the home, we'll get a desk into the single bedroom as well. Um, so they're the factors. A chair, that again depends on do we have a set of occasionals that we're bringing into the house and we don't want to split them because we tend to not split our occasional pair, uh, chair sets. Otherwise, we're left with two individual chairs that'll come into the warehouse at two separate times of the uh, like month and they're kind of useless to us as a pair. So what we do is we use one in a living room and we'll put one in the master bedroom or one in bedroom two. The, the chairs are sort of they depend on the level of the property and whether or not there's the space or is it cutting off the entry to the ensuite? Does it cut off exit to the balcony? All those sorts of questions as to whether or not we incorporate them. There's not really a process to the selection of bedside tables. The master bed has nice big ones, so they tend to be something that you would have in your home, something with a drawer, something a bit bulkier. Um, and the bedside lamps that go into the master bedroom tend to be nice ceramic lamps with a nice big shade on them colour coordinated with whatever the stylists have chosen to put onto the bed. Uh, in the bedrooms two, three, four, the bedside tables can be more like side tables. So maybe we've got a nice ceramic drum, maybe we've got a metal uh, side table, something of some interest um, to use in those spaces. They're generally not as bulky as what we'd put into a master bedroom. Um, and then the lamps, uh, the girls have a number of options downstairs, but generally they're color coordinated for whatever they put into the bed. Yes, we do. Uh, generally, master bedroom always have something of interest. May, we have a lot of lifestyle photos that are taken, uh, lifestyle photo shots that are taken of the master bedroom uh, by real estate photographers. So, some greenery on a bedside table in a master bedroom always goes a long way. We do have real estate agents that request us specifically to put some greenery on all of the bedroom bedside tables. So for those agents, we do. But again, it's a return on investment thing. So I don't see the quality, the, the point or the return in for a vendor in putting greenery on every single bedside table. Um, we will generally just focus on the ones where we know we're gonna have the shots or if we've got a really big bedside table and a really small lamp, then we're gonna offset what's on that bedside table. The bed is, gen so one of our rules that we have in place is that from the entry to the bedroom, so the door, you should be able to see the full length of the bed. So I don't, we don't position it so that it's tucked around a corner. We don't position it that you have to walk in and around the bed in order to have see the space. Those two reasons, if we position a bed so that you have to do either of those things, um, it makes the room feel a lot smaller. But when a potential buyer is walking through a property, they don't, have much time to form those um, first impression opinions uh, about those rooms. Generally, they just look in, process, leave. Um, so if we can give them the idea that the room is spacious and a great size for a double bedroom with minimal time needed to look into that room, then it's job well done. It actually doesn't matter um, for us if a, uh, something that a lot of people avoid is putting a bed under a window. Um, for us, that's not a big, I would rather put a bed, there's feng shui principles that come into play, which is why people don't like to put it underneath a window. I, the principle apparently is that all of your good luck goes out the window. But if you are going down the path of putting it under a window versus putting it on a combined hallway wall, which is generally where your two options are, the feng shui principle when you put it onto a hallway wall is that you're going to have an unrested night's sleep because Obviously, you've got people walking up and down that thoroughfare keeping you awake. So they sort of work hand in hand and there's no really no perfect ideal scenario as to which wall to put your bed on. We will always default to going out of the window if you can see it, the full bit length of the bed from the front, from the door entry into the room. The girls have two options. We've got an actual steamer. Um, it's, it's basically a, a clothes steamer that anybody could use to steam their clothes, um, but we do it on the beds. You could use an iron, we just don't want to have the the possibility of an iron going into a car and hurting somebody. Um, but then the other option, if there's no power in the house, is to spray it with a spray bottle, like a little water spray bottle, and then you can pull it uh, nice and taut and give it a really good wipe and it actually stays wrinkle free. So they're the three options that we have for us. As a styling company, we have a massive assortment, a huge arrangement of like a range of um, linen that we use. We've got patterned, we've got non-patterned, we've got cotton, we've got linen, we've got polyester, we've got a huge range of um, 
linen from Sheridan, Adair's Pillow Talk, um, throw rugs from ED Lifestyle, from a, um, from Paloma Living, we uh, from Address Link. We've got so many different types. Um, so there's no right or wrong when it comes to what you stock as a as a styling company. When we are styling a bedroom for a, a vendor to live in that property while they're selling, we will always default to having a thick wa waffle weave blanket, uh, doona, sorry, um, quilt cover. They are now available from Target and from, I don't really like the one from Kmart, the Target ones are better quality, um, or a quilted top uh, a quilt cover, which is also available from Target. Both of these are around $69 for the doona cover itself for a queen bed size. The reason we use these, uh, because A, they come in white, and B, they don't crease. So the clients can sleep in the bed, there's minimal stress and, and worry for them to have to live in the property while it's styled, uh, and they get a duna cover out of it, because then we don't have to wash it. It honestly depends on each stylist. The process that I use is I will, I will select the artwork that I am going to incorporate first. I will then draw the colors from that artwork into the cushions that I select. If I'm going for a master bedroom, I go for something, maybe I'll go for a nice pair of artwork. So the pair of artwork has black and white. Generally, my bed is also going to be monochrome. I might throw a touch of gold in there. If I, if I don't have any color in my artwork, I'm not going to necessarily bring color into my bed. There's too much of a contrast through. Uh, vice versa, if I have colors in my artwork, I am not going to bring a, another, a secondary or a third color into my bed uh, because there's too much happening. So it all depends on the artwork. Um, as to how you build the bed out. Um, same goes for whether or not I'm using a pattern bedspread. If I'm using a pattern bedspread, I'm not gonna go for an overly complicated piece of artwork. I'm going to restrict myself generally to a, to a mirror. Um, that way the bedspread is the artwork in that scenario. Um, then the cushions that you'll throw on the bed tend to be block colors, as well as a block color throw rug. There's no other pattern happening because the pattern bedspread speaks enough for itself. Um, if you overcomplicate it, the real estate photography will look terrible. So there are a lot of different ways you could do it. We've found the dimper bags from Ikea are being absolutely phenomenally fantastic and efficient. Uh, they have recently changed the way they sew them up, so they do break a little easier. But at $8 each, they're not a small investment investment. For us though, definitely worth the change in efficiency if we have to go through each bag and see what's in there. So the dimper bags from Ikea. To pull together the bed uh, would take probably I would say around 10 minutes depending on what stock you have available and if you're building out a, a master bed, are we using any of the client stuff and we're are we providing linen. A double bed would probably take a little bit quicker, not that much. When you're making the bed, because of all the preparation happens before you get even to the property, the making of the bed is like not even five minutes. The making of the bed is super quick. We've got all of our doona sets are made up so we don't actually have to put the insert into the doona cover on site. That's all done here. Um, so yeah, it's, it's very quick once we're on site. Oh, frames. I was so late to come to the party on bed frames. Um, so we used to stock bed bases. For those who don't know what an ensemble base is, you've got a mattress and you've got the ensemble base. The base is the part the mattress sits on. Traditionally, you have a big timber frame that has some sort of fabric around it and that's what, and some wheels at the bottom and that's what your, your ensemble base is. Uh, as a styling company, that takes up a lot of room, like a, a whole lot of room. That's basically what a half of our warehouse was at one point. Uh, Artiste, and I can't remember the name of the other brand, came out with these bed frames, which are basically collapsible bed frames that are wire and they are fantastic quality. and. I was dubious to start with, but turns out they're just as amazing and fantastic as a standard bed base. And that's now what we use. So they literally are the size of a suitcase, actually smaller, and don't take up anywhere near as much room on a truck, don't take up as anywhere near as much room on the truck, um, the warehouse, and I can order them on Amazon and have them three days later, which is bonus. So bedrooms are somewhere where we have uh, a bit more freedom to play. So in the living rooms, we have a consistency all the way through. So if we've got blue coastal in one living room, that is what you're going to see throughout the rest of those living spaces. The dining room, it goes flows to outdoors. Those colors in those living spaces stay consistent. In the bedrooms, we played up a little bit. So the bedroom, if we've got a contemporary style, the bedrooms are still going to be contemporary, but they're not gonna match the same colors as those living spaces. It gives us the freedom to appeal to as many people as we can um, in those other bedrooms. So we can appeal to the, the teenage daughter, we can have something in there for our young son. We have mum and dad spaces, as well as our guest room, all styled. They don't necessarily have to be the same color. They don't have to be the same style they have to be the same caliber as the rest of the, the uh, listing, but not necessarily the same style. So it gives us more 
um, flexibility and freedom to appeal to as many as we can. Single beds are generally reserved for homes that are more of a family target buyer. If whether or not we're appealing to a family target buyer is a decision we can make based upon where the home is located and the size of a home. If you have a five bedroom, three living area home, you are not selling that to a professional couple. You are generally selling that to a small family. Um, it's a downsizer selling a family home so they can go move into something smaller to a family who is growing and that's generally how it works. So as a general, we will style that size home, uh, bedroom number five or bedroom number four with a single bed in there with a TP. Um, if we then look at a townhouse who the demographic is most likely to be an investor who will be renting out those spaces or a professional buyer, those spaces do not warrant a single bed. Um, so those ones, we will not put a single bed in there. They'll be queen double double because that's generally how it's going to be used. The exception to the rule, always exceptions, is if that room is particularly small. So a room that is smaller than 2.7 by 2.7, they are going. To, it's going to have a single bed in there. Um, it's more important for us to get. So if you think about those um, those townhouses that are sort of two bedroom plus a study. So there's really quite small third bedrooms, but we still want to send sell bedroom three as a bedroom. They're the ones we're going to get a single bed in. King bed is reserved for more of those glorious retreat size spaces. So the room generally has to be five by five. Um, a queen bed, we will never ever style a master bedroom with a double bed. It will always have a queen bed or a king bed. Um, if your bedrooms two, three, four are generous sizes, so when I'm talking generous, I'm talking 3.5 to 4 by 4, by four um, size rooms, which is not abnormal, especially in quite a few of the new builds we're seeing come through. They're going to have queen beds in those bedrooms, two, three, and four. Uh, double beds are reserved for rooms that are 2.7 by 2.7 up to that 3 by 4 three by three, um, anything small is gonna have a single bed. Thank you so much for watching. There was a lot of information now. I hope uh, we covered off everything you would like to know. Now, obviously we probably haven't hit every single uh, area of beds in when it comes to home staging. If you have any questions, again, I said it at the top of the episode and I'll say it again, please leave them in the comments and we will get back to you in a future episode. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you back here next week.